A large math class receives exam grades. Grades follow a normal distribution with an unknown population standard deviation sigma. We draw a random sample of 25 grades. The mean of the sample is 70. The standard deviation of the sample is 10. We want to know two things. First, find the 95% confidence interval of the unknown population mean. Then, we want to know what happens if the population standard deviation is equal to 10. For the first part, first thing we need to do is figure out what type of distribution we're going to have for the sampling distribution of the mean. So, that's going to be the distribution that we use to construct our confidence interval. Here, our sample size is 25. That's less than 30. We have a normal distribution for the population, but we don't know the standard deviation. So, that means we're going to use a t distribution. In this case, the number of degrees of freedom, we just subtract one off of the sample size, so we're going to have 24 degrees of freedom. Now, what items do we need to construct a confidence interval? First, I need the center. In this case, that's going to be the mean of the sample. So our center is going to be 70, our x bar. Then, I need the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the mean. The way I get that, we take standard deviation of the population, divide by square root of the sample size. Now, since we don't have sigma, we're just going to use the standard deviation of our sample. So I'm going to take 10, divide by the square root of 25. 10 over 5 gives me a 2 for this standard deviation here. The final piece. I need to know what factor I use for 95%. Now, in this case, okay, if I have a 95% confidence interval, that means I'm going to split the remaining 5% over each tail. So that means each tail is going to have 2.5% or an area of 0 0.025 since the total area is 1. So if I go to my table for t distribution values, well, that's going to be given by, okay, for our table, we're only going to look up what happens in one tail. So in my table, I look up the 24 degrees of freedom. The area that we're interested in in the tail is going to be 0.025. And when I do that, my t value is going to be equal to 2.064. So this point right here, okay, if the center is 0, then right here we're going to have that point 2.064. So that's also going to be our factor. So that means for our confidence interval, the endpoints are going to be given by okay, our center, which is 70, plus or minus our factor, 2.064. Then our standard deviation for the sampling distribution of the mean is 2. So I'll have 70 plus or minus 4.128. Or our confidence interval for 95%, it's going to go from 65.87 to 74.13. What happens if we know the population standard deviation? So we have our sigma is equal to 10. The sampling distribution of the mean is going to change. So before we were using a t distribution. Now because I'm starting with a normal distribution with a known standard deviation, that's going to mean what comes out is also going to be a normal distribution. Here, okay, the center of our confidence interval is going to be the same. It's going to be the mean of our sample, which is 70. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the mean, that's just going to be given by our sigma divided by the square root of our sample size. So that's going to be a 10 divided by 5 gives me a 2. Note that hasn't changed from the previous part, but that's because s is equal to sigma here. Now, what will change is going to be the factor that goes with 95%. So here I'm using a normal distribution instead of a t distribution. So I have to figure out what factor goes with 95%. So we go to the table. For the table, okay, what the table will tell you is, OK, 
Okay, your Z value, if you're going from zero to your Z value, that'll tell you the area under this part of the curve. So if I want 95% with both tails, half of this area, it's gonna be half of 95, it's gonna be 47.5% or area 0.475. When we look that up in the table, we'll get our 1.96. So that's the factor that I use. So our confidence interval is gonna have endpoints, 70 plus or minus 1.96 times our standard deviation, which is two, or confidence interval is gonna go from 66.08 to 73.92. Let's interpret what we just worked out. We have a distribution of grades. For whatever reason, we're unable to calculate the mean of all the grades for the population. So, I'm going to estimate the mean using sampling. Now, we draw a random sample. We construct our confidence interval. The way we interpret that is, there's a 95% chance that the actual mean for the population is inside this interval. Now, for the two cases that we worked out, the sampling distribution of the mean was, in the first case, a T distribution, and then the second case, a normal distribution. And then from those, we constructed our confidence intervals. So you'll note for the first case, it's gonna be wider than the confidence interval in the second case. So the idea is gonna be, as we get more information, the confidence interval is gonna get smaller. Okay, and that's a good thing. That means your 95% guess just got better. Okay, recall how do we get more information? Well, for the T distribution, we got there because we knew the population was normal, but we didn't know the standard deviation. Once I put the standard deviation in, we drop the T distribution, and then we have a normal distribution, and then our 95% interval gets smaller. 